Now, so far, we look at how the fundamental matrix can be used to transfer a point, which we call x in one view, onto a line, which is an epipolar line denoted by L prime in, on the other view. This relation here is simply given by L prime equals to F multiplied by X. And we have also seen how the fundamental matrix can be used to provide a constraint between two corresponding points X and X prime in the two views. So if these two are corresponding points, we saw that the relation of X prime transpose uh, multiplied by F and X must always be equal to zero. It turns out that the fundamental matrix can also be used to do a transfer between the epipolar line in the first view, which we denote as L, and the second view, which we denote as uh, L prime over here. So it turns out that there's also a mapping relation between L and L prime using the fundamental uh, matrix. And this uh, is given by the equation of F of L prime equals to F multiplied by the cross product of any line, which we denote as K and L itself. So let's see why is this true. Suppose that we have a, a line which we uh, write as uh, K on the first view. Let's say, for example, this is my line K, and it will always intersect the epipolar line L at a certain point. This point here, it's given by the cross product of K with L. And since we know that a point in the first view is going to get transferred to uh, the epipolar line in the second view, which we denote by L prime, and this equation, let's say we denote this particular point as X, we know that X tilde is going to be uh, transferred to the second view as F multiplied by X tilde. And this equation over here, substituting this particular relation of the cross product of any line K with the epipolar line L into this equation over here, we get F multiplied by the cross product of K and L, which is simply the relation between L prime and L. And interestingly, this works for any lines K. So K here can any line that we arbitrarily define on the first image. We can see that uh, it all will always intersect the epipolar line uh, at any single point x tilde. So if k is here, it will also intersect at one point over here. And this particular point is also going to be transferred on the second view epipolar line via uh, this equation. Now we can see that we can generalize this to a transfer of a epipolar line uh, from the first view to the second view, which it denote by L and L prime respectively. The mapping over here is simply F multiplied by the cross product of uh, uh, the, any line that we define in the first image. And interestingly, we can see that this is also equivalent to a homography that maps the 2D line onto a 2D line. So this homography here, it's simply mapping a 2D space onto a 2D space. Here is what I meant earlier on. This can be seen as a homography. And the so if we were to transfer the line from the second view back to the first view, we will get a symmetrical relation that looks something like this, as we have uh, seen earlier on. This two mapping the transfer equation over here via the homography of F uh, multiplied by any line, the skew symmetric matrix of uh, any any line K over here, it, it, it holds true for the pencil of lines, the pencil of lines, uh, epipolar lines that we have defined earlier on between the two images. Any corresponding pair of epipolar line is going to lie on the epipolar plane. Its existence is defined on the first image as well as the second image respectively. Hence, there's a valid homography that transfer L from the first image to L prime on the second image. And similarly, we can also define this relation using 1D homography. Let's take an example that this is a line K that we have seen earlier on. We can see that the line K that we define arbitrarily, it's going to intersect the pencil of epipolar lines. So all these are the pencil of epipolar lines. 
uh, the family of uh, points over here and similarly the corresponding uh, points to, to this set of points in the first image which we call i1 and i prime over here so the corresponding point is also going to lie on a straight line over here because this is linear mapping and this set of correspondence line together with the its corresponding point it's going to intersect at a certain projection point that we call P over here. That means that if we were to draw a line from the connecting P and X, as well as X prime in the first and second image respectively, across all the points here, we'll see that there's a projective relation between the set of image points in the first image uh, and its corresponding points in the second image and in fact we have seen this uh, earlier on in the first lecture that since this set of points in the first image and the set of points in the second image they are projectively related that means that the cross ratio the cross ratio between these two sets of points must remain consistent and hence there is a 1d homography that relates the point in the first image and its corresponding point in the second image We'll go on to look at how, how the fundamental matrix behave under uh, pure translation. So in this particular case, so we assume that there's no rotation between the two view, which means that the rotation in the second camera is going to be at identity. We further assume that there's no change in the intrinsic parameter, which means that K simply equals to K prime for the two camera projection uh, matrices and hence we can write the two camera projection matrices in the canonical form where the first camera projection is given by p equals to k multiplied by the identity matrix which we denote as p prime it's going to be given by k multiplied by identity because rotation here is simply equals to identity and this gives rise to this identity and k over here uh, which is supposed to be k prime it's equals to k because there's no change in the intrinsic uh, parameter. There's a translation vector that we denote as t over here. If we were to put into the fundamental matrix that we have derived earlier on in the algebraic derivation, that we saw that the fundamental matrix is actually equals to the cross product of the epipole in the second image with the camera projection of the second image and the rotation matrix multiplied by the inverse of the camera intrinsics of the first uh, uh, camera. So now because the k prime here equals to k and r equals to identity. So by replacing these two values over here in the original expression of the fundamental matrix, we get the final fundamental matrix for the camera under pure translation as this particular form over here, where we can see that K and K inverse cancels out. And hence, we end up to have uh, the fundamental matrix equals to the skew symmetric matrix uh, of the epipole in the second image. And we can also verify that since this is skew symmetric, what this means is that the rank of this particular 3x3 three three matrix here over here is going to be equals to 2. And this is consistent with the rank of the fundamental matrix, which is also uh, supposed to be 2. Now, early on, we get the fundamental matrix to be equals to the skew symmetric matrix of the epipole in the second image. We can use this relation that we have derived earlier on to define the epipolar line uh, in the second image. We'll use the same equation that we have looked at earlier on, that uh, the transfer of the point x from the first image to the second image is going to be L prime over here, is going to be given by f multiplied by x over here. And since f and the pure translations here is going to be given by the skew symmetric matrix of the epipole in the second image. This means that we can replace the fundamental matrix over here with this expression and multiply by x over here. Since we also know that the second point, the corresponding point x prime over here, is going to lie on the epipolar line in the second image. What this means is that the dot product of x prime and L prime 
is going to be equals to zero. So if we were to substitute this or uh, L prime with what we have derived earlier on here into this equation, we'll get this particular relation of X prime transpose multiplied by E prime, the cross product, the skew symmetric product of this and X equals to zero. And what this particular relation over here implies is that X prime, E prime, as well as X are going to be collinear. So the reason why we say that the X prime, E prime and X are collinear is because we can see from this particular equation over here, if we take the, uh, the last two terms over here, the last two term over here, E prime cross with uh, X over here, it actually defines the epipolar line which is this line over here. And since X prime is going to lie on this particular line, and that's why the dot product of this, uh, of X prime with the epipolar line that is defined by E prime and X under pure translation is going to be zero. What sim it simply means is that X prime is also going to lie on this line that is formed by E prime and X. Hence the three points, the X prime, this correspondence X as well as the epipole in the second image are going to be collinear. And note that this collinearity property, uh, it doesn't generally hold in uh, uh, for a general motion. It's only under pure translation that the fundamental matrix becomes the skew symmetric uh, matrix in the second epipole. And in the general form, we can see that this is not true because there is an extra term over here, which is K prime multiplied by R and K inverse. We look at under this uh, pure translation, an example here. So uh, we can view the pure translation in alternatively as instead of uh, having two, the camera, instead of having the camera moving from, for example, here or on at this point here uh, to a new point under uh, pure translation. So this is my uh, camera, for example. And instead of looking at the pure translation uh, from the perspective of the camera motion, we can also look at the from the perspective uh, of the world uh, scene. Let's say that uh, in this case, my camera center remains fixed. That means that my camera is uh, stationary, but the world, for example, this cube in the world, in the 3D world, it actually undergoes a pure translation motion in the opposite direction of minus T. So uh, what this means is that it's moving from this uh, location to this location where all the correspondences, all the point correspondences are going to follow a straight line. Uh, it's going to be a straight line where this sets of straight lines between all the different correspondences of the 3D entity are going to be parallel. So all these lines are actually going to be parallel to each other. This means that the this particular 3D entity, which is the cube that we have seen, uh, that we, we draw in this particular example over here, it's going to move uh, under pure translation of uh, 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 minus T. And what's interesting here is that we can see that th this set of parallel lines that is spanned by the corresponding uh, the 3D points undergoing pure translation is going to project onto the image as this set of lines over here. And we can see that since the parallel lines are going to intersect at infinity, at the plane of in infinity, uh, and this particular intersection point is going to be uh, reprojected, is going to be projected onto the image as the vanishing point. And interestingly, this vanishing point over here is going to be our epipole that we have uh, seen earlier on. And uh, we can also see that uh, we can also see that the the, the early on we state that uh, these three points x prime, e prime, as well as x must be collinear, uh, and vice versa. So uh, what it simply means is that uh, on the other on the first view, e and x, and as well as uh, x prime and X, they are also going to be collinear. So we can see that uh, since the parallel lines 
the intersecting point of the parallel lines at the plane of infinity, it's going to be reprojected uh, onto the image as a vanishing point here. We will see that this is actually the epipole, and uh, we can see that a corresponding uh, 3D point over here, which we denote as capital X and X prime undergoing pure translation is going to be, be projected onto the image as small x and small x prime over here. So you can see that since x and x prime are going to lie on the parallel lines and all these parallel lines are going to intersect at a point of infinity which reprojects to the epipole over here, the vanishing point, which is also the epipole over here. We can see pretty clearly that uh, the reprojected points of x and x prime are going to be on a same line as the epipole. All the lines that parallel lines that links a, a pair of correspondence uh, x and x prime, they are all going to be projected onto the image and uh, intersects at the vanishing point, which supports our claim that x x prime and e the epipole are collinear. In the second example, uh, we can see that uh, in this in, in this particular case, we have a camera uh, which is at C in the first uh, time, and then we are going to translate this camera. We are going to move this camera forward uh, in under pure translation, and the new camera center is going to be denoted by C prime over here. In this particular case, because this is under pure translation, as we have derived earlier on, the fundamental matrix is going to be given by skew symmetric matrix of the epipole. And uh, here we can see that intuitively or geometrically, we can see that let's say this is the this is our epipole over here. And if we were to move under a pure translation, the epipole actually doesn't change because the epipole is the line under pure translation, the baseline that joins these two camera centers, C and C prime, are going to intersect at the epipole, and as well as going to intersect at the epipole uh, at the second image. So they are all going to be uh, collinear, forming a, a straight line over here. And as a result, we can see that the epipole remains unchanged. But any point correspondence, let's say uh, this particular point correspondence here, a uh, particular point over here, which we denote as X in the first view, it's going to move uh, to a certain location, which we call x prime over here. And interestingly, because the epipole doesn't change, uh, the epipolar line it's also going to remain unchanged. What it means is that this particular epipolar line it's going to get transferred to the same epipolar line on the second view. But here we will see that if we were to plot x prime on the first image over here, we will see that x prime is actually on the same epipolar line, but further out. And uh, this supports our claim that uh, e, e, e and X and X prime are going to be collinear. And what's interesting here is that as the camera translates forward under pure translation, we can see that the epipole remains static and all the correspondence point are going to appear to moving radially outward of the image uh, with respect to the epipole as the center. So under general motion, which means that we have a camera that uh, two cameras uh, that moves the, the, where the relative transformation is related by R, a three by three rotation matrix, as well as a three by one translation uh, vector. And we will see that under this general motion, uh, we can decouple the motion into two parts. The first part is a pure rotation which is under the influence of R. And we will see that under pure rotation, this is equivalent to transforming an image from uh, the original uh, frame into, the, uh, into another frame under homography. And once this pure rotation uh, uh, is, is completed, we can see that the remaining relation between the image that has been transformed under pure rotation to the final image in the second frame. It's simply a pure rotation. The reason why we say that uh, the relation of two images under pure rotation is given by homography is because of what we have seen earlier on. Suppose that the pure rotation is represented by R over here. The homography that relates these two images under pure rotation is simply given by K prime multiplied by R 
multiplied by k inverse and that's the infinite homography that we have seen earlier on where r here is equals is equivalent to the rotation of the second temporal uh, matrix which we which we denote as uh, p prime over here and uh, the first camera matrix over here, we are going to denote it using a canonical representation of uh, the intrinsics multiplied by the, the identity uh, matrix over here. That should also be a prime over here because now we are not assuming any particular motion or any particular assumption on the intrinsics value. So there should be two different camera intrinsics which we denote by K and K prime over here. So once we express this particular transformation under pure rotation as an infinite homography, we can see that there is a fundamental matrix that relates the image after transformation by the infinite homography and the final image under uh, the, the, the influence of a new fundamental matrix which we call F tilde and we saw earlier on that uh, in the earlier example that this uh, fundamental matrix under pure translation is simply given by the skew symmetric matrix of the epipole in the final image or in the second view and if we were to put these two motions together because we say that uh, it's going to be a pure rotation over here and then uh, followed by a pure translation over here. So this means that the final motion here from this view to this final view here is actually a composite of the two motions that we have decomposed earlier on, the pure rotation followed by the pure translation. And putting these two together, we will get the final uh, fundamental matrix, which is given by the skew symmetric matrix of the epipole in the second image multiplied by the infinite homography. So this guy over here is actually the infinite homography that we have seen earlier here. To verify that this, is, this expression here is exactly the same expression as what we have derived earlier on in the algebraic uh, fundamental matrix derivation. And uh, we can also, uh, where, where this particular guy here uh, is the pure translation and this particular guy over here is the infinite homography under pure rotation. Up to this point now, what we have looked at so far on the properties of fundamental matrix is how the fundamental matrix is used to relate a pair of point correspondences between two views which we denote as x and x prime over here. So we saw that uh, it's actually defined a mapping of uh, a point to a line, the epipolar line on the second view and we also saw that this defined correspondence constraint which is equals to zero and now we will turn our attention to look at given a certain uh, fundamental matrix that we uh, denote by f over here how can we decompose this particular uh, fundamental matrix into the camera matrices p and p prime of the respective uh, two views and it turns out that the decomposition of a given fundamental matrix into the uh, camera matrices of the respective two views is not unique. So what this simply means is that uh, given particular fundamental matrix, we can have more than one set of P and P primes that fulfill the decomposition that returns us the same fundamental matrix. And uh, more specifically, these sets of projective uh, matrix, camera projection matrices are related by a homography. What this means is that uh, P and P prime, as well as P multiplied by a uh, four by four projective transformation, as well as P prime and H, this pair over here and this pair over here, they're all going to uh, be mapped into the same fundamental uh, matrix. Let's look at the proof of why is this so over here. We know that in the case of a, 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 the projection of a 3D point into a 2D image, uh, the equation is given by of P multiplied by X, then that's also equals to P after uh, a projective transformation, which is given by P of H and the 3D point after a projective transformation, which is given by H inverse of X. So since 
the edge over here cancels out, we can see that uh, both of these projection matrices where P and PH are related by a 4 by 4 projective transformation uh, of H, they are equivalent. Hence, uh, what this simply means is that point correspondences of X and X prime in two views, they are going to be a corresponding point under a particular uh, pair of camera matrices P and P prime. And they are also going to be a match pair. So what this means is that they are also going to be a pair of correspondences in the 2D image under the two camera matrices of uh, PH and uh, P prime multiplied by H, uh, which means that this, this is the equivalent of uh, the first camera, the first set of cameras undergoing a uh, transformation of uh, by a 4 by 4 projective uh, matrix over here. Under this particular new set of uh, transformation, the correspondence the, under the 2D image is going to be the same, but the 3D points is going to be uh, different. What this simply tells us is that the decomposition uh, of the fundamental matrix into the pro camera projection matrices of the two respective views is not unique. They are all related via a 4x4 projective uh, matrix. Uh, although we have seen earlier on that given two camera projection matrices, the resulting fundamental matrix is unique. We, can, we, we saw earlier on that this fundamental matrix is actually equals to the product of a uh, P prime C cross of this. This means that this is the epipole in the second image multiplied by uh, P prime and P uh, and, the, and the pseudo inverse of the camera uh, of P, which is the camera projection matrix of the first uh, image. So we can see that given P and P prime, we always get an unique F. But the converse is not true, uh, since uh, the decomposition of F can result in multiple sets of camera matrices for the two views that are related by a 4x4 four four, uh, projective transformation. We'll, we'll go on to prove that this 4x4 four four projective transformation always exists on the camera projection matrix after the decomposition of uh, the fundamental matrix. But before that, let's uh, first define the canonical form of the camera matrices, which is required for the, the, the proof. Uh, so in this particular case here, we, we show that the fundamental matrix corresponding to a pair of camera matrices that is canonical camera uh, matrices that is given by P equals to identity. Let's ignore the camera projection matrix over here. And hence, the project camera projection matrix is simply a 3 by 4 matrix that is given by identity and 0. And the second camera uh, projection matrix, which we denote by P, is given by M and uh, the 3 by 3 matrix M and also a 3 by 1 vector M over here. And we can see that the resulting fundamental matrix is given by the cross product of the last column of the second projection matrix and the first 3 by 3 matrix of the second camera projection matrix. Now let's look at the proof on why is this true. We know that the epipole in the second view E prime over here is simply given by the projection of the first camera center uh, into the second image over here, which is given by P prime multiplied by C. And uh, substituting these two matrices defined earlier on into this relation over here, we'll get a second camera matrix, which is M, and, uh, 3 by 3 matrix of uh, M and a vector of 3 by 1 vector of M over here, multiplied by the camera center of the first camera, which is defined at uh, 0, uh, since this is a canonical representation. Uh, we'll see that this is actually the camera center is actually given by 0, 0, 0, and 1. And multiplying it, uh, we get the last column of P prime. So this is the last column uh, of P prime, which is given by the vector, the 3 by 1 vector of M over here. And earlier on, we also define uh, during the algebraic derivation of a fundamental matrix. We saw that a fundamental matrix can be given by the cross product of the epipole and the product of P prime and the pseudo inverse of P. So substituting 
the expressions of p and p prime into this equation over here, we can see that uh, this essentially resulted in uh, the, this particular expression over here, where the pseudo inverse of p is simply given by a 3 by 3 identity matrix, and the last row would be a 3 by 1 uh, 0 uh, uh, entries. And since p multiplied by p inverse is going to be equals to identity. I'll leave this to, uh, to you to verify that this is true. And after expanding this particular expression over here, we end up to have this equation, which is what we have seen earlier on. Hence, we prove that the fundamental matrix is given by this particular equation under the canonical form of the camera uh, matrices. Now, uh, with this definition of the the fundamental matrix under the canonical camera configuration. Uh, let's go on to prove uh, the theorem. Suppose that we are given any pair of uh, camera matrices of the two views, P and P prime over here. And the second pair would be P tilde and P tilde prime over here. That uh, these two pairs of the camera matrices of two views, if they both correspond to the same fundamental matrix, that means that after decomposition of this fundamental matrix, we get P, P prime, we can also get uh, P tilde and P tilde prime. They both fulfill this particular fundamental matrix. Then the relation between the two sets of cameras must be a four by four non-singular H matrix, which simply transform the first camera center via this transformation over here, P multiplied by H into the second camera. So this is going to be P tilde equals to P multiplied by H, as well as the same H metric over here is going to transfer the second view, which is P prime into P tilde prime uh, under the same relation that we have seen here. Now, the proof is as follow. We, we, we first suppose that uh, the relation is true. That means that suppose that for a given fundamental matrix F, and this particular fundamental matrix F corresponds to two different pairs of camera matrices, which is given by P and P prime. So this is the first two views, the P and P prime, where this P and P prime, the two views give rise to a fundamental matrix, as well as another two views, which we denote as P tilde and P tilde prime, which also gives rise to the same fundamental uh, matrix here. Suppose that this is true. And furthermore, let's define the pair of camera uh, projection matrices in the canonical form as we have seen earlier on. This simply means that we can fix the first view at identity, which means that P and P tilde over here, these two pairs, we have these two pairs, pair number one and pair number two over here, we can, we, we fix the first view, which is P and P tilde over here to be equals to a identity camera projection matrix, which means that the world frame is simply aligned with the camera frame at identity. And then we denote the, the second view of the two pairs, P prime and P prime tilde uh, as a general three by four matrix given by this guy over here, as well as uh, another general uh, three by four matrix given by this guy over here. According to the result given in slide 40, the fundamental matrix of the two pairs of camera matrices uh, expressed in the canonical form can be written as uh, this form over here. We can see that from slide 40, this is true because uh, in a canonical form, the fundamental matrix is simply equals to the cross product of the last column of the second camera projection matrix and the first three by three matrix of the second uh, camera projection matrix. Our first assumption here is that these two pairs of camera matrices corresponds to the same fundamental matrix. What it simply means is that the first cross product that we obtain from P uh, prime over here that defines the fundamental matrix F, it's going to be the same fundamental matrix as the cross product terms that we have obtained from the camera matrix of the second set, P tilde prime that we have defined earlier on. And 
before we complete the proof, we need the following lemma over here. And uh, the lemma says, suppose that the rank two fundamental matrix F over here can be decomposed into two different ways. So, uh, uh, which we saw earlier on that F equals to the cross product of this guy over here, and F is also equals to the cross product of this guy. Uh, this is actually the second camera of the first set, and this is actually obtained from the second camera of the second uh, set. Then, uh, A tilde is going to be equal to K of A, where K is a scalar value. And uh, 3 by 3 matrix of A tilde, in, in the second camera view of the second set of camera uh, projection matrices, is going to be equal to A plus A V transpose divided by K, where K here is a non-zero constant scalar value. And V over here, we'll define it as a, a three vector.